please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. Hey, welcome everyone. Hopefully another fun video here today at Blue Glow Electronics. You guys may remember I made a series a year or so back on a uh, single-ended KT88 amplifier, and many of my viewers followed that video and built their own amplifiers. Well, this is a case where one of my viewers followed along, built the amplifier, uh, did a pretty good job on the build, actually. Um, got done with it, and it doesn't work. And he's been pulling his hair out trying to chase down the issue. So we tried swapping a lot of emails back and forth. Didn't think we were going to solve it that way. And so I told him, if you want to ship it to me, I'll take a look at it and uh, see if I can resolve the issue. Sometimes you just get too close to these things. You know, it's it's... Sometimes you need a buddy, a pal, somebody that you can say, hey, can you take a look at this? And uh, with just a different perspective, a different set of eyes and kind of back up. And uh, sometimes you'll find the uh, solution to your problem that way. And that's that's kind of how this one turned out. But I thought I would show you the steps I went through to figure out what was wrong with it. And uh, we can kind of take it from there. All right, so we got the unit on the bench. The owner's complaining that it doesn't sound good and that the little LEDs down here in the cathode bias of the 6N1P um, aren't lighting up. And, you know, to me, that's somewhat irrelevant. What I really care about is it doesn't sound good. So the first thing I did um, before I, you know, did anything, before I powered it up or whatnot, um, I did two things. One, printed out schematics, okay, of the unit. And this is why I love to label my schematics with voltages. Um, you know, they're not always exact from amp build to amp build, but they're directionally correct. Um, and then the other thing I went through and did was just a good physical check of all the connections, the wires, making sure there are no cold solder joints. Um, you know, I like to use a little uh, chopstick here. And I did find, let me see if I can uh, slide this over and zoom in and let you see here. Maybe a little bit. All right, so I did find when I push on this little capacitor, um, and maybe this is hard for you to see here, but this wire right here, um, it's a cold solder joint. It's not connected at all right here. So that's, that's one thing causing a problem. In other words, we don't have cathode bypass because that's what this capacitor is for on this tube at all. Um, and I don't know whether you guys can see it, but uh, let me see if I can zoom it in just a little bit more here for you and get it clear. You can see it down there moving. Anyway, we're going to solder that real quick. So we're just going to get down in here and uh, I think it was a matter on this one maybe of just not getting the wire and the, um, the tab here hot enough. But all right, that was a simple fix. However, <laughs> don't think that's our problem. I think that was a problem, but not the problem. So next, what I've done is I uh, started with the power supply. I'm sorry here. Um, and I just walked through everything. And literally, I'm just checking connections. How's this wired? How's that wired? Is everything running? Just making sure everything's wired up correctly. And, I, you know, I did the same over here. Uh, kind of walked through for the most part at a pretty high level, made sure everything seemed wired up okay. And it did. So I thought, well, Everything seems to be intact now. We fixed that cold solder joint right there. So let's uh, let's go ahead and bring it up on a variac here. Okay, not sure if you can hear that, but with the amp turned on now, what I hear is a lot of hiss from both speakers. And when I hit the play button on a source, even with it wide open, I have little to no volume. So um, really low volume. I hear a lot of hiss going on right now. Um, so that tells me something is not right here. So up next, what I do, I clip the blue light wire here onto the negative terminal of my, um, of my voltmeter here. I grab the other end and I put on a lead with, um, you know, and I just started going through and checking voltages throughout this amplifier, right? Um, and then I was comparing those back to the actual schematic here. And I'll show you where things started to go astray. OK. 
Okay, I do not recommend at home laying your voltmeter down inside of a unit, but um, I took some special precautions here. At any rate, you know, I started checking things like the B plus, you know, feeding over to the um, to the output tubes here. So if we go to the plates of the output tubes here, um, you know, right here, according to my little according to my little sheet right here. I should be getting about 450 volts. I'm getting 456. That little bit of variation can just come from line voltage in your house. So don't don't think you got to be exact on that. Same thing over here, you know, um, 456 volts. The good news is it's both the same and gosh, I can tweak my input voltage enough to get it down to 450. All I did was drop down to 117 volts there on the input. Um, but I'm getting the same on the plates here. Similarly, you know, I went and checked the cathodes here on these tubes here. I'm getting 42 volts. If you'll notice here, I had the 41 volts. Um, similarly here, 42 volts. So I just started walking my way through this unit. Then I came over here and started checking out the power supply feeding the 6N1P. And going to play pins number one and six of the 6N1P here, um, I'll give you an example here. Coming off the B plus here at 460 volts, which should be feeding from this red wire over down and to this middle point, right? 457 volts, we're about right. Then I go across this dropping resistor here, um, should get me down to 442 volts. Hmm. You notice I'm not seeing quite the drop here that I thought I would. Okay. Then if I feed on across and come down here to pins one and six, I should be down to 229 volts. Okay. Well, when I get over here on this actual tube, okay, when I get to pin number one here, where I should have 229 volts, I have 430 volts. Similarly, over here on pin number six, I have 430 volts. And I'm going, hmm, I should have 229 volts. And I'm looking, and I should be coming across here. This 442 volt resistor should drop down, volts should drop across this 39K, which, oh yeah, by the way, is also through this shade resistor here, tied up with a 200K back to the 450 volts coming to feed into the KT88 here, okay? And what I found was, if, when I started tracing here, um, coming down, this B plus here that should be feeding through a 39K resistor right here on this side and on the other side, instead, what is, the, what is there is the 200K. So in other words, he has the 200K and the 39K on resistors backwards. Right here is the 200K, and right here is the 39K, and they're backwards. Um, we just need to swap those two resistors, and I think we will have solved our problem. Now, that kind of stuff is super easy to overlook, and you're sitting here looking, and you're going, I've got my 200K resistor, I've got my 39K resistor, I've got them wired in. It's just so, sometimes you get so close to these amplifiers, you just got to step back um, and really take a fresh look at it. Start checking voltages. Voltages, I, I tell you, I, I about 10 years ago, I, I ran across this, this tech. And he is one of these, I would say in the southeast here, he is one of the renowned techs for fixing RF equipment, whether it's a... You know, a piece of um, ham radio gear, an amplifier, a radio station. I mean, this guy does all kinds of RF stuff, and he is like one of the go-to engineers, okay, or repair guys. And I got, I sat down with him, and I got to talking to him, and I said, so tell me what's on your bench. And he said, well, you got to realize, Mark, I don't get to work on a lot of stuff on my bench. I usually go out to the customers, because this is big, heavy stuff we're talking about. And so I usually end up going out to them to fix things, not bringing, you don't really bring a radio station to your house, right? And I said, well, what do you use? You know, what tools do you do you use? You know, tell me about your oscilloscopes. 
tell me about your function generators, tell me about your, your uh, spectrum analyzers and all that. And, and he, he literally said to me, Mark, I solve almost everything I do with nothing more than a voltmeter. Um, he said, I use the AC setting, I use the DC setting. He said, um, you know, if you can get the voltages in line and, um, you know, follow your signals through and whatnot, nine times out of ten, you can you can figure out what's wrong and, and get to it with a, a voltmeter. And, you know, and I, I believe it because I use this thing more than anything else. And I, you notice I solved this today with nothing but a single voltmeter. Um, and, you know, even if I wouldn't have had a schematic, it would have been simple enough to go online and look up 6M1P and typical plate voltage for one of those, and I would have known it's not 400 and some volts, it's 200-ish, kind of 200, 250 kind of volts. I would have known something was out of whack here with nothing more than this meter. So if you'll notice, I've got my handy-dandy little discharge stick here. <laughs> very, very important. Um, I'm going to feed it over here and bleed off the uh, the B+. Plus. If, if you need to know how to make one of these, I've got a video out there on it. Uh, it costs you about 20 bucks, and uh, you just clip it on the ground in one place, and you go around and you, uh, you discharge your capacitors um, everywhere they kind of feed in at, and... Uh, you know, at the end of the day, then when you go in here to start soldering, you don't uh, end up um, zapping yourself. So we've got this circuit discharged at this point. I'm not going to drag you through the desoldering, resoldering exercise, but I guarantee you once we get this fixed, it'll solve our problem. If it, if it doesn't, it's probably because I may have to replace these LEDs, but I don't think so. Um, we'll find out here more in a minute. All right, even after swapping those around, still not such great luck. Um, did a little bit more measuring, was still picking up a lot of voltage on the cathode of this tube here, and couldn't figure out exactly why. Well, I stripped off, and let me see if I can zoom in here into the, into the spot. Um, there we go. I stripped off, and maybe you can see it right here, the diodes that, that we've got in here. And if you'll notice, one end of these have a little stripe on them, and the other end, a little silver stripe, the other end doesn't. We've got the stripe here towards the tube itself, um, which is the cathode. And if you'll notice here, the stripe on our schematic is away from the tube and towards the resistor. So we've got these diodes in backwards. We've got to... Uh, Got to flip them around as well. And maybe you can see it a little easier here on the other resistor. You got the resistor, you've got this, you've got the uh, cathode, which is the stripe end of the diode, which is pointing away from the resistor. And if we come back to the schematic here, um, it's pointing towards the resistor, towards ground here. Okay, maybe you can see it now. We've got the uh, nice little um, diodes glowing red down here now. now I, went, I, did, I soldered these back in the correct way and I, I, I did a dirty and cheap solder job on it and didn't put them back in the heat shrink or whatever. I sent the owner a picture and said, hey, I'm going to leave it like this. You'll know what's wrong. If you want to unsolder them, put them back in the heat shrink and do all that, you can. It doesn't hurt to leave these exposed. It's just, you know, you may have red light emitting from underneath your chassis somewhere, but these are fairly small LEDs. Um, but that that was what was that was what was wrong. And I want you to think about this for a second. So if we had 460 volts here, 442 volts here, but when we measured here, we still had like 400 volts. Well, why would that be? Keep in mind the voltage drop from this point to ground is a voltage divider between this resistor, what gets dropped across the tube and what gets dropped across the cathode. Well, with these LEDs in backwards, we basically had shut this circuit off right here so that there was really no current flowing right through here. Um, any, that <laughs> any that was, um, you know, may have been a result of some grid leakage or whatnot. So in reality, that's why we had the voltage sitting here that we did. As soon as we turn this LED around and we started flowing current through here, we get the voltage drop across this resistor like we should get, 
and all of a sudden then we actually get um, we actually get the voltage drop across the rest of this which brings the voltage down right here so nonetheless we are solved now I am going to uh, get this unit back to the owner check this out um, let me see if I can get the focus working here okay um, all right amp sounds phenomenal i have gone through at this point and checked a lot of voltages throughout the units and everything is tying up good and tight now at this point in time so this thing is biased um, where it should be and uh it's ready to head back to the owner hey Look, if you ever build an amplifier in one of my series and you get to a point, you know, you're just pulling your hair out and struggling or whatnot, feel free to reach out to me. I, you know, I'll let you ship it to me. In this case, all I'm charging the guy is shipping back because I don't have a, I didn't have a lot of time. I told him it took me longer to make the video than it did to actually fix. You know, I might have had 20 minutes worth of work in, in figuring out what was wrong and fixing it. I mean, I had no parts involved. Now, you know, if I had parts involved or it took me hours, that'd be a little slightly different story. But um, if it's something simple like this, glad to fix it for you and get it back to you. Um, the last thing I want is somebody to put, you know, um, you know, 50 hours or so into building something like this, can't get it going, and then they're just stuck with all this, you know, the, the money they've spent and the... Uh, and the time they've got invested in something and the whole purpose of this is to let people build something and enjoy it so don't 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 hesitate to reach out you know it might take me like just like this guy when he reached out i told him you know be a couple weeks till i could take it in type thing but but we were able to fit it in all right hope everybody enjoyed this thanks for watching stay tuned um we'll keep making these